What's good? It is Sam here. I'm here with my buddy Rodrigo. He owns a restaurant in Lemonster, Massachusetts that we're going to be talking about. And some of the things that uh, he does to be creative and increase the sales, just increase his network and stay uh, thriving through this time. Uh, Rodrigo, can you um, introduce yourself and then just tell us how you got into doing this? Hey, Sam. Thank you very much for have, having me, man. Um, good to see you. And yeah, I know. Good to see you, too. Um, I miss you. You know, like, you know, he used to live here in Lemonster town. Used to have God all the time. Now this dude, you know, get up and leave, you know, go go to the warm weather. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But I miss you, man. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here uh, on your channel. But, uh, yeah, my name's Rodrigo. I own Comiquito Brazilian Steakhouse. Um, in Lemonster, Massachusetts. Uh, we've been in business for 11 years now, uh, coming up 11 years. Uh, so, You've uh, owned it all 11 years? Huh? You've owned it all 11? Yes, yes. Okay, sorry. Um, and um, as you probably know, like restaurants is probably one of the toughest businesses out there. Uh, I'm originally from Brazil, so I live in the United States for 19 years now. Uh, I've worked in restaurants uh, throughout my whole entire time that I've been in the United States, pretty much. It's kind of like a, a long and a funny story, so I, I'll kind of to keep short. I'll try to kind of keep short. I started doing roll-ups, you know, like I, I sat on a table and I was doing roll-ups all day, you know, all shift long, a fork, a knife, a, you know, a napkin, you know, like all day, all day long. That was one of the side works that servers hated to do. And uh, the reason why I got that job was because my cousin worked there. I used to go pick up my cousin every day, and I used to fill out an application every day. Every day I would go there and fill out an application. And the, the, the general manager said, dude, you cost me more money in application. I'm just going to hire you. So I didn't I know that. That's awesome. Kinda, that, that's awesome. I kinda, did you know about that? I, don't I, know, know. I did not know that. That's amazing. Uh, I kind of made my, uh, I, I created a position for me to work at that rice rack. And, you know, working in that position for a couple of weeks, months, you know, like, and then I, I started being a bus boy, food runner, you know, and then my English got better and uh, I became a server. And then from there was history, right? I'm just... Uh, you know, I'm. I was pulled into this business for 19 years. You know, like I so, so this the hospitality industry, and um, after working at the restaurant for seven years or so, and a couple of other different restaurants, I had an opportunity to, uh, to uh, buy a business here in Lemonster. At the time, it was a smaller shop, like a five-table shop, and. Um, I, uh, I, I started, you know, with a friend of mine who quit in the very first day, very first day. This dude that I started with, you know, that we bought this place on Central Street in Lumberster. You know, he started, we started and then he quit. So then, how did that, how did that work? How did that come out? How, how did that come out to play where he quit in day one? Be, dude, I don't know, like uh, something, you know, like. You know, like he, he at like three o'clock, he pulls me aside and he said, dude, this is not for me. This is not for me. Like the first day. And, um, you know, needless to say, when we started the business, I scraped all the money that I had to buy the business. The, the, the first day we did not have money to put in the register for change. I borrowed 50 bucks from, uh, from somebody and I paid the 50 bucks back at the end of the day. And, uh, but in, you know, back then, like I, I, I probably had one eighth of the experience that I had now. I always work in the front of the house, never like front of the house, cooking, washing dishes and all that, you know, picking up the phone and all that. So. Or growing know, a business or being a business journey. owner. Huh? Or growing a business and just being a business owner. Yeah. Those two different things. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I kind of, it was kind of like a very turbulent start you know but you know here we are 11 years later you know still kicking and pushing forward you know so so you you uh got the opportunity to buy this business and it was in a different location and a much smaller yeah and you you bought this business you scraped together all the money you could at the time 
and and you didn't even have the money to put it in the cash register to make change for people who did come in on your first day. And yeah. so that you borrowed that and you took that. Where where did where was it when you first bought it in terms of sales annually? Oh, uh, about two hundred fifty thousand a year. Okay. You know? Um, yeah. Uh, around yeah, two hundred fifty to three hundred. I stayed in that location for five years. We gradually, you know, increased sales there. You know, um, I was there for five years, so probably you're ranging, you know, from the day in year number one until um, year five, about three hundred fifty, maybe. And then I moved to this location, which is bigger. Uh, we became more of like a sit-down restaurant. You know, back then we were seeing more of like as a takeout and delivery place, you know, uh, we improved the menu. You know, we try to make things nicer. Um, and, uh, you know, like three years into this new location that I'm at right now, I did a whole renovation. So it's five years in the, the, the smaller shop. Then I moved into the, this location. Three years, we just kind of came into this location the way it was, no upgrades, nothing. It used to be an Italian place. And then uh, in the mark of uh, three years, uh, which would be our eighth year in business altogether, we did this renovation. And we turned the restaurant into a Brazilian steakhouse, which is another you know, step up from what we are doing. And the place looks really nice now. Um, you know, We hold a really good reputation in town. And um, yeah, we gradually grow and look to grow more, even going through these tough times. And you've grown through, grown substantially since uh, coming over to this new location. Um, and that's why I wanted to talk to you because I think your experience, both in terms of every single job in the restaurant, uh, but also running a business. And I know that we've had many, many conversations before I moved about how all the creative things you're doing to just keep the gas going all the times because you're always on to try to think of different ways to mm -hmm. be creative in terms of growing your business and, and growing uh, your relationships and your, your network of the people that are around there just that are aware of you. So I wanted to ask you, it, right in during this time where we have all this chaos that's happening around the world and specifically in the United States, I'm in South Carolina. We are not in total lockdown here yet, but I know you're in Massachusetts and you guys are you guys are a lot where you're locked yeah. up, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Massachusetts. It's kind of becoming one of, I guess, the the hottest spots, the highest spots of uh, um, cases of uh, you know the the coronavirus. I think, and uh, as in right now, I think it's like a semi lockdown that we are. A lot of a lot of businesses are still open. They they are, they are asking everybody to stay, you know, home. Um, in which a lot of people are staying home and uh yeah we try our best to uh so, so what was what was that what was that like mentally for you when when it was like hey you need to shut down your business when your business is essentially like a child and people who don't own businesses don't realize that that's like an appendage that's like part of who you like that's a big big portion yeah. of your life it's like taking your arm off so how was that? How was that mentally for you in the in the early like twenty four to forty eight hours of finding that out? And then what are a couple of the things like the top two or three four things that you've been doing specifically to um, continue putting like the pedal down to the metal and continue to grow during this time uh, uh, of panic and chaos in the world? You know, um, I mean. Thank God we are, we are not completely closed. We are partially open doing takeout and delivery like most places. Um, and we, you know, obviously we are considered like a life sustaining business. So, you know, like they, you know, they let us operate, but we are down, you know, like probably 35, 40% if we are lucky, you know, uh, in terms of uh, business, right? So, so you, probably. you're, you're down to uh, 30 to 40% of sales before, or you're down 30 to 40% from 100%? From 100%, like, you know, like we you used to do this much, we're doing this much now, which resulted in us, you know, kind of thinking everything over again, you know, like my main, a lot of people, some people they're closing down, 
because they have like much bigger operation, it, it does not justify to stay open and sell a little bit, you know, and keep you know like a big operation going. But we came from these um, sphere, you know, from this world of a takeout and delivery. Right now, we're not really seen as a takeout and delivery place anymore. So we still equip. We still have the, the know-how on how to do it. We, we, we still do it, even when things are fine. But takeout and delivery became like 5 7% of what we do. So, um, you know, answering your question, you know, so we really had to think, you know, how are we going to keep going? You know, like the number one thing that we, unfortunately we had to do was to see, you know, like we need – one person working in the front, one person working in the back, a support person, and a, and a driver. So we have X amount of hours available for all these positions, and we have X amount of employees. And out of these employees, some of them, you know, like a full-timer, they rely on, on this job. So we kind of gave preference for the people that rely on this job. And we spread the hours, you know, people who were server, you know, now they're kind of helping us with deliveries, you know, uh, and so forth. We kind of move things around. So that, that was like number one thing that we had to do because the, the numbers won't work. You know, if, you, if you're only doing 35% of what you used to do and it's still staff the same, obviously it's not going to work. Um, another thing that, that we are doing, we are, you know, really try to maximize and explore social media, putting the word out there, you know, like one thing that as uh, uh, Grant Cardone, I heard Grant Cardone say, and uh, most people like don't realize it, but in times like this, instead of, a co instead of contracting, you need to kind of like, you know, Expand. Go, out, go all out, you know, because a lot of people, they're going to contract, right? And we actually... We are, you know, we are, you know, doing some Facebook campaigns, you know, really targeting, you know, these type of business, you know, and pushing this type of message, take out and delivery, you know, and pushing things out there, you know, like that people can actually save money by ordering from us because we create a package, like which is five meals, you know, uh, for $65. So, you so know? just to touch, I think this, this needs to like, so you went from one you were a regular sit down restaurant where 90 to 95% of your business comes from people coming in there and sitting down within the matter of probably several hours for you, knowing how much I know about you or over the course of like a day or two, you went from that to creating a brand new menu that is specifically tailored to takeout and shifting the strategy completely to uh, uh, doing some takeout and trying to optimize for that. We, we, we had to pivot quick. You know, we had to pivot quick. And, uh, you know, like, and people are actually catching on on this package a lot. You know, like, they're really enjoying the, you know, the, the five meals. Because think about it, dude. That's kind of like, that's probably what people spend at the supermarket, $65 a, a week minimum, you know, like, and they have to clean up, they have to set up, cook, clean up, and all that good stuff, right? And, uh, you know, with this you know, package, you, you have one meal a day, you know, so, um, so it's, it's good. It's good. You know, so, and the one thing about me that, uh, I have, I have gone through a lot, you know, throughout these 10, 11 years in being in business. And, uh, I usually shine the most, you know, during tough times, you know, like, man, I don't know, dude, <laughs> I don't know, but like, oh my God, you know, sometimes you always think, you know, you know, like, Jesus, you know, do I need to, like, I got to go through a trial every day. <laughs> every day is a trial. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, it just becomes second nature, you know. You just adapt and, and, and keep going. And, uh, you know, having a good team by your side that, uh, you know, that, uh, I, you know, adjust to change, you know, quickly. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's mainly talk, talk, can you take, can you, we talked about it before we started, uh, briefly about, uh, some of the things that you're doing with the, the hospital up there, um, oh. in terms of the, the people who are on the front lines of like what's happening right now and like the stress that their families are going through and they're going through and like what you are doing, even though you, like you just mentioned, every day for you is like, 
a trial and a tribulation to figure out how can I get money in here to help these people who are depending on me for yeah. a living. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was the number one thing. Sometimes if I closed all together, I'd probably lose less money. You know, so, you know, like I was telling a friend of mine, you know, like, um, you know, people, because everybody wants to do takeout and delivery now, right? So uh, I know that, uh, you know, it's not being pessimist or negative towards these people, but, you know, like some of these people are not going to, you know, make it. You know, they're not equipped, you know, like, and it's a matter of who can get punched in the face, you know, longer, you know. And, uh, boy, I have the resilience to be punched in the face for, for quite a long time. But um, um, your, answer your question, we have done a couple of things to kind of get, a, you know, build a report, more of a report with the community, uh, which is something that I have always tried to do. You know, um, they, you know, a lot of people are pushing out all their help local business, help local restaurants, this and that, you know, like, yeah, sure. We uh, want to be helped, but me as a restaurant, I also want to do something to try to help, you know, the community to help somebody out there, because I'm sure there is some other people in the worst shoes than I am. So every day, you know, people who ordered from us, uh, we put their name in a bag you know, and uh, in, a, in a hat, you know, and then every day we we uh, we do a contest and we we draw a um, ten dollar gift card. So everybody who orders from us, they get a ten dollar. You know, uh, they they enter to win a ten dollar gift card every day. So that that was one thing to try to give back. Another way that we do, another thing that we're doing, we allocating five different meals every day. For somebody in need so I'm constantly putting some posts out there and I, I tell people hey if you know anybody who could use a good meal you know reach out to us that we are allocating five different meals every day to give to these people we will, we will even deliver if, if you need it you know um, Friday we fed 25 nurses at the hospital in Lamaster you know which is another uh, ca uh, category of professionals there you know, became, you know, like heroes, you know, like they were working, you know, around the clock, putting their lives on the line to save lives, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, like these are all, 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 all some other things that we're doing to contribute, you know? And, and all the steps that you're taking in, in this time, as you mentioned, you would you'd probably lose less money if you just shut down. But it's all of these things now are these these minute like details to move you along and to help the people who depended on you for a job to be able to feed their families and mm -hmm. also taking care of the community. Because I know that you uh, are, are humble in a lot of ways and that's why you didn't bring that stuff up. But this guy I've seen grow in the last couple of years since I've known him. And you you see the things that, and they're really coming from the heart when you're doing this stuff. And it's, it's nice to see uh, that because there's a lot, people do things that are pretty transparent in, in ways that are not coming from a genuine spot. And I know it's coming from a genuine spot. So it's nice to see those things, you know, and this is going to continue to build for you as, as we either, this is the new normal or yeah. this is, it could be right. And, um, sure, you mentioned about this, about the businesses and how, uh, um, <laughs> they're going to be learning a lot over this in terms of the size and, and what is needed in business. And then I couldn't agree more. And uh, Rodrigo, you want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah. One thing that I wanted to uh, uh, articulate here is, you know, the, the reason why I didn't, you know, shut down, you know, you know, like one, like I am the, you know, like I'm not putting myself on a podium here, but I'm the type of guy I fight until the last breath, man. You know, I've, I've gotten like, these close a lot of time to, 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 to like closing the business, like because I had no money, I had no help, you know, like I've gotten this close a lot of times, a lot of times, like the, the, the electricity company, like they would come in that day to shut off my electricity. All of a sudden I would work out a miracle, you know, God, you know, the divine help would come and I'll, I'll be able to, uh, you know, pull up that money and pay the bills, right? But one thing that I like my people to see, you know, and it does 
uh, impact the DNA of your company, the DNA of your business, when they see that the leader, you know, it has that type of uh, resilience. And that, therefore, consequently, they also acquire that as well. We are not a, we're not a group that we, we quit quick, you know, we quit, you know, like, you know, you know, you know, stuff may go, you know, down south, but we're gonna do things until our last breath. Yes. So that, that's that's number one thing, you know, like we gotta keep that DNA intact, right? Of hustler and grinder. Uh, I, I, another thing is that you know, like you know, like you said, there's people who rely on this. I mean, I rely on this, you know, you know, I rely on this on this job. And there's people here who are feeding their family from this, right? And um, I wouldn't, you know, I would feel very bad to just kind of like throw the towel, you know? So I, I you know, like I, we, we did not want to do that. I know I, uh, when I was doing the uh, landscaping business that I had uh, in Florida, and uh, at one point, I think we had about five guys and the, um, it's 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 one it's only five guys but at the same time it was the um responsibility to make sure that i was able to provide work for these five guys that are working for me full time so that they can go provide um food and shelter and live their lives because they're relying on me responsibility a lot of people don't think about uh you know uh, that a lot of people don't think like how your actions can impact people's life, lives. You know, like if you go out and you start doing all kinds of crazy, stupid shit, you know, like it's going to impact your business, you know, and that's going to, you know, impact your business. It starts to impact the people that are under you. I, I agree. Is you know there, I mean? um, before we wrap everything up, I just wanted to take the time and, and say that I appreciate you coming on here and give, sharing some of these tips and just the mentality, what it takes to be successful in moving forward in this time where everybody has this sense of like panic that's just right there at the forefront of what's happening. Uh, is there anything, um, if, if somebody wants to like get a hold of you or ask you questions, other small business owners in the area or maybe... Uh, um, what would be the best way for them to reach out to you? And I can also leave whatever links in the description below for anybody uh, doesn't catch uh, or doesn't write down what Rodrigo is about to say. Yeah, I mean, I'm very easy to get a hold of. Uh, just, I mean, go into my website, comkito.com, uh, my Facebook page, Rodrigo, Comkito, and my Facebook business page, Comkito uh, Brazilian Cuisine. Uh, those are th those are the spots you know like the easiest the easiest uh, places to uh, to find me. Uh, I would love to answer any questions. You know, try to you know give me some insights to help anybody any way, shape, or form. Please feel free to reach out because by exchange ideas like this, even even if you do have a total different type of business, there's a lot of similarities. There's some things that you know that you're doing, Sam, on your business right now that I could apply and tweak a little bit. Vice versa, apply, yep. And vice versa. You know, um, I, I honestly think what we're going through right now, um, uh, let me ask you this. How long do you think this whole thing is going to last? Like, like the lockdown thing is one thing that uh, everybody has a different, you know, time frame in their mind. You know, I know that you read a lot, you investigate, you, re you do a lot of research. You know, like, what do you think, like, the lockdown itself? You know, when do you think that they're going to, you know, um, um, be comfortable sending people out on the road and living a normal life? So if we, if I look at, like, say, China as, a, as like, the template to use to try to gauge um, right, because with anything, right, in, 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 in business or other aspects of life, you might say like, hey, this person is doing X, Y, and Z, and you would model their behavior or their actions to try to get similar results, but you're going to tweak it in your own way. So if we use China as the example, and we say that it was about a three and a half month or four month lockdown or something in those lines, right, from early January up until, you know, a couple weeks ago or a week ago or something, and we can say that maybe potentially the U.S. could learn more quickly, so it could be less than three months. Uh, but on the other hand, 
you have China, which has the capacity to do things that the U.S. government will not do, like arrest people for things that are just at this point they have the they have the capability of doing this. Build but a some of the in ten days, huh? What's that? Build a hospital in ten days. Did you see that? <laughs> like this is like wait, I don't want to take this to another. To another. Okay, so let me let me we'll, we'll wrap this we'll wrap this up quick. I, I, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. Like, how can you do a hospital in ten days? I understand they are the king of uh, architecture stuff and engineering. They can build things fast. I know that. I know that China can do this type of things. But like, how? Let's just say, and I don't want to take this video th towards another path. But let's say me and you, we have I don't know, like. Five billion dollars, however, you know, how much, whatever it is, to build a hospital. And I say, hey, Sam, let's start building a hospital tomorrow. I pick up the phone and, and then let's start calling people. I say, hey, uh, I need um, for 1,000 people, a hospital for 1,000 people. I need 1,000 hospital beds here by tomorrow. And then you pick up the phone. I need 100 ventilators. I need 50 x-ray machines like how do you do that i'm not but, even talking but, but i'm I not think, even talking land getting the land preparing the land and none of that but i think i think it also goes to you and your business going from 90 to 95 percent dine-in and five to seven percent takeout to now only losing 40 percent of your business and completely shifting your business model somebody like me or somebody who maybe has a restaurant that's not in the same capacity is looking at what you're doing and they're like, how does he do that in 48 hours? Right? Like the, the, I think that like, there's probably some type of skill set from somebody who does clearly there's something there that allows them to do that. But getting back to the question, I think, I mean, like, I, I would like to think the U S has been able to learn some from other parts of the world of what they're doing to control what's happening. And if we could cut it down from say maybe three and a half months to two months or two and a half months or. I, that, that's kind of like what I had in mind, you know, like being very optimistic, you know, like two months, three months, that's kind of, you know, um, but I mean, again, you know, like this is going to, this, this is going to change things. I was talking to a friend yesterday. Yeah, I think this is going to change how we interact with one another, you know? Like, I am, I know, my, you know, like, my background, like, I'm Brazilian. Like, we shake hands and we hug, we kiss a lot. Like, I think not a lot of people are going to do that for a long, 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 long time. Even though, like, when we see that, you know, curve of cases of corona going down, I think people are still going to be very, people might, I mean, you know, I don't, not everybody, but most people are going to feel very reluctant about how they interact with one another, you know? I do. I, I completely agree. I think that this is going to have the same type of shift that happened after 9-11 with the hotel, uh, with the travel industry and the TSA completely changed travel, just like 2008 completely changed the financial industry. The, yeah. the same exact thing is going to happen to now and how it forever changes the way we live our lives uh, in some capacity. And, and that, um, uh, result or like what it might actually do would just be conjecture at this point. But I think that it's naive to say that it wouldn't, we, there's going back to normal. The, I think that what you mentioned, having some normalcy to what we're doing right now is going to be, that is going to be the new normal. That's just what, what's going to happen. We just don't know how that's going to play out, uh, in terms of what business lines are just going to get completely annexed and which, new form of business or industry is going to get uh, um, who's going to spring to life during this time. Remember like Uber and Airbnb and Lyft and some other companies started around 2008, 2009, 2010. So w when there's a uh, giant like anomaly that happens to a system that creates opportunities for yeah. new forms of business that we've never seen or thought of before. And I think that is going to be what's going to happen uh, going forward. But uh, I do want to appreciate you for coming on today. I'm going to wrap this up. If you guys have any questions uh, for us, let me know down below and I can shoot them over to Rodrigo. Or uh, you can jump over. I'll leave your Instagram and the links you mentioned uh, down yeah. below as well. I put my info uh, somewhere below, above, I don't know.
Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll put it down below. And I appreciate anybody, if you, don't forget to subscribe and like if you found any value in this or share this with somebody else. If you know a small business owner and they might be struggling with what's going on or be under a lot of stress, it, it, there is people out there who are still pushing. There's still people out there who are still like trying to move the needle forward. And Rodrigo is an awesome example of that also with it coming from a very good spot inside. And I, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and uh, appreciate you guys for watching.